What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be giving you 10 things that you need to stop doing if you have anxiety. But you know what time it is? Smash that like button down below if you're ready to kick anxiety in the butt today. Leave me a comment, today's question, what is the number one thing that you love that anxiety is keeping you from doing, all right? We wanna change that today. If you're new here, be a part of the family and hit that subscribe button, tons of videos like this to help you with your anxiety recovery process. And guys, if you apply everything that I give you in this video, you can recover from from anxiety. It takes hard work, but I'm telling you, do what I ask in this video and you will see improvements. The first one, guys, is stop seeking constant reassurance. All right, I want to be clear. Keyword, constant. In the beginning, you need to make sure that this is anxiety and not a health problem. Go see the doctors, get the testing, see a few different specialists, get multiple opinions. Do this within the first few months that you start exhibiting symptoms and then start working towards acceptance. I spent years doing what I should have just done in the first few months, all right? So it drugged my health anxiety out. And I'm not just talking about health anxiety. I'm talking about asking for reassurance on everything. Is everything gonna be fine? Is everything gonna be okay? Are you sure I'm cut out for this? Do you really think I can do this, you know? Sometimes asking these questions can be helpful. You can get some support, but when you constantly rely on other people to reassure you that things are going to be fine, you never develop internal reassurance. You have to tell yourself that you're healthy, that this is anxiety, that you accept. You have to be able to tell yourself that things are going to be okay. You have to tell your subconscious everything's going to work out and that be actually good enough for you. That's when you start seeing improvements. This next one, guys, is super important. Stop waiting for motivation to do the things that you need to do to recover from anxiety. You already know a lot of the things that you need to do. You're just waiting for that spark, that motivation to get out of bed or to start that diet or to cut these things out or to start working out or to start exposing. I'm telling you right now, since your subconscious is wired to fear and negativity, that internal motivation is gonna be hard to come by. A lot of you are finding yourself relying on videos or books or quotes or certain movies to get you fired up and sometimes that can work for a day or two. But I'm telling you, motivation is cheap. It doesn't last. Start making decisions that are best for you whether or not you feel like it. It gets easier. I was able to start developing self-motivation after I did things that I didn't want to do, okay? And then after I was done with it, I was like, wow, I did that. Then I felt motivated to do it again the next time. So you can build some internal motivation, self-motivation, by doing the things that you need to do when you don't feel like doing them without having to rely on an external source of motivation that's gonna be cheap and ultimately it's not gonna last. This next one, guys, some of you refuse to stop doing. Stop Googling your symptoms. Stop trying to play doctor. Stop trying to play the expert. Go to the actual experts. Go to the actual doctors. Get some actual testing done to prove that this is anxiety versus a health problem. You're wired to negativity and fear. You're going to assume whatever negative crap that's on that search result is the truth, all right? And just FYI, they're going to put the worst stuff at the top, the most dangerous stuff. It sells, all right? Or it's the most serious thing that can be associated with your symptom. Any symptom can be a symptom of cancer. Any panic attack symptom can be a symptom of a heart attack. I spent hours and hours Googling and digging myself in a deeper hole. You're trying to protect yourself by Googling these symptoms, but all you're doing is holding yourself back from freedom. This next one, guys, stop checking your vitals, all right? We're talking about your heart rate, your blood pressure, your oxygen levels, your blood sugar. Stop checking them unless a doctor has instructed you to check them. And most likely, if you're watching this, a doctor hasn't told you to check them. If you haven't seen a doctor to even know, go see a doctor, all right? Stop trying to play doctor. When I checked my heart rate, it was I was never satisfied. Most of the time, it was way too fast, okay? And anxiety can do that. If it wasn't too fast, then maybe I thought it was too slow and my heart was gonna stop. Blood pressure was always high because anxiety can do that. <laughs> Those of you checking your oxygen, it's always 98 or 99. It never changes, but yet you continuously check it because you feel the shortness of breath. Blood sugar, some of you are addicted to checking that. Get rid of these devices, the Apple Watch, all right, or the blood pressure machine, or the oxygen thing, or the blood sugar checker. Get rid of them, give them away, or smash them with a hammer. <laughs> Sell them on Amazon, get your money back, all right? Keeping those things in your house is like keeping alcohol around when you're an alcoholic. You're gonna use it when you're desperate. Get away from that form of external reassurance. The next one, guys, stop avoiding. I'm not talking about unhealthy stuff, all right? I'm talking about things that trigger you that you need to be able to do in this life. Going to the grocery store, driving, being able to travel, going to work, being in social situations, 
you avoiding it, first of all, is not gonna allow you to heal or to recover from anxiety. I'm just, I'm just letting you know, you can have a kick-ass routine, but if you keep avoiding certain situations, you'll never heal, all right? And I'm just gonna let you know, when you avoid something, you're telling your subconscious that this is dangerous, all right? You're confirming the problem. So next time you're in that situation because you avoided it already, it's gonna be even harder. So break the cycle today. Stop avoiding these things. The next big one, guys, is stop running. Some of you are exposing, right? Some of you are trying to not avoid certain situations, but when you get there and your symptoms arise, you run. Again, you're telling your subconscious, this is terrifying. This is a dangerous situation. I'm literally like running up out of this grocery store. So next time I'm in this situation, please make it even harder on me. Really let me know that I got to get out of here and that this is a dangerous situation. So the next time you're in that line, it's even harder. Okay. Same thing with avoidance. Once we start avoiding, it gets harder the next time. Once we start running, it gets harder the next time. So again, break the cycle today. Next one, stop responding in fear to your negative thoughts, intrusive thoughts, or symptoms. You're telling your subconscious that you're worried, all right, that you're in fear. And I'm just gonna be honest, what you're doing is you're taking a big old thing of gas and you're pouring it on an anxiety fire, all right? When you respond in fear to any of your symptoms, what happens? It gets worse. Change the way that you respond, all right? Be more combative. Challenge the symptoms. Maybe that's not for everybody. Maybe self-love and comfort to your subconscious is, is the way to go for you. Try that, okay? That's an option. But if that's not working, be more aggressive. Really show your subconscious that they don't bother you. That's when symptoms start to dissipate, all right? When the message isn't getting to you and you're not showing fear back, right? You have got to change your response. Ask the symptoms to get worse. Start confusing your anxiety. If I'm asking the symptoms to get worse, does that really sound like I'm super scared of them? No, so the subconscious is gonna to start to pick up over time that this isn't needed. The next one, stop viewing anxiety as a nightmare. If you view it as a nightmare, it will be your worst nightmare. View it as an opportunity, a possible blessing in disguise, a sign that you need to grow, right? A sign that you need to level up to enjoy the rest of your life post-anxiety. This is a growing process. This is a transformation. Get excited about recovery. Get excited about all the changes you're making right now. Think about it. Some of you are dropping bad habits that you never would have dropped if you didn't have anxiety. Right? Whether that be eating, drugs, alcohol, smoking, caffeine, whatever. Some of you are not going to have an ounce of fear within you whenever you overcome this. I'm telling you, you're not gonna be afraid of doing anything or trying anything because you're gonna be so used to embracing being uncomfortable. The next one, guys, stop numbing your anxiety. There's many ways you can be doing this. Alcohol, tobacco, drug use, comfort food, right? Sugar, <laughs> buying stuff, right? Sex, there's so many things that you could be using in an unhealthy way to cope with your anxiety. It doesn't make things better. Embrace being uncomfortable now and start to rewire. Those things are not gonna help you. They may make you feel good for a little bit, but oftentimes it makes you even hit a new low the next day or whenever you're done with it. Alcohol was an ex is a perfect example. It would numb my symptoms, but the next day was a living hell and I had to drink earlier to get that same satisfaction or that numbing effect. And this one, guys, stop looking for a quick fix. There's no quick fix. You're not gonna quickly fix and rewire your subconscious even in a few days or even a week. Some of you may be thinking, I don't believe in a quick fix. Well, you believe in like a week quick fix or a two week quick fix. Sorry, sorry, doesn't happen, all right? Stop relying on that one dose of CBD or that one supplement or that one video, maybe just one quote that you're missing. Guys, you're in a dark room looking for a switch that isn't there. <laughs> There's no quick fix. It takes time and consistency and patience to overcome this. Trust me, this is the hardest thing I ever had to do. I'd be doing a disservice to make this seem even a little bit easy. It's not. It's hard. It's difficult. Go down below in the comment section and let's make an awesome affirmation. I will stop these things today. I will stop these things today. Now, if you're serious about recovery, and I mean serious, and you're ready to put in some work, you're ready to expose, you're ready to actually be patient and consistent, you're ready to stop relying on a quick fix, right? Go get my course, Elite Anxiety Bootcamp. I'm gonna put the link down below in the description and in the first pinned comment. Super affordable, tons of information packed in there. It's gonna lay it all out for you step by step. It's gonna show you what I did to overcome panic disorder, health anxiety, generalized anxiety disorder that I suffered from for five years. And tons of people tell you that you can't overcome it. It's, it's unfortunate, I hate seeing it, but guys, I overcame 
those three anxiety disorders. So be a part of that if you haven't been able to get it. It's changing so many people's lives. I want you to be a part of that as well. There's online therapy, uh, my coaching program, and other social networks down below in the description. So grab those. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you're new. Tons of videos like this again. And if you have subscribed today, if you haven't done it, please hit the notification bell so you get notified when I put the videos out. I'm gonna be going to two uploads a day soon. I've been uploading every day for almost three weeks now. Two uploads are coming, so don't miss a thing by hitting that bell. I want you to check out this video that I did, and I love you guys, and until next time, keep fighting.